Honorable Leader of Opposition Business. Thank you, Madam Deputy President. Um, on this resolution, uh, Madam President, permit me to again ask questions. And um, this parliament do not have an answer, answer, question and answering section. And I, I would ask, ask that the, the government side be patient when I ask questions because this is the business of the people. And um, it, it, it's supposed to be an, an enlightening. But early on, there was a motion where we, two motions, Madam President, two motions, important motions that speak to what I sense this motion is attempting to do. One have to do with um, going to, I suspect, the same agency in terms of um, through the ECC, through a regional, a regional guarantee for businesses in which a response from Senator Bellrose highlighted it was for the creative industries, but in the not only, but there was a general presentation made that this is to facilitate business. Also in the previous motion that we discussed, we made reference to the fact that our local banks are liquid. Liquid, there's monies in our local banks to the extent that the government can go to the First National Bank and loan $32.6 million. And the interest rate is attractive. And of course, the leader of government business explained in the purity of economics, demand and supply. There's not much demand, and therefore, the rate of interest is low and attractive to government. I ask, why then would the government have to go to the NIC to guarantee loan for the development bank who is loaning from the NIC 20 million for housing if our local banks are so liquid? And please, you do not have to greet my questions with a laughter or smirk because it has to do basically with some, to me, some, some of what has been mentioned. It's either it's not adequate and need further clarification or something is, is, is I'm, I'm, I'm missing out on something. I understand that we are currently very liquid. La belle agent tout bon. Bokwanik oudi lani kweske. Please pay 4 billion dollars. Pièce son pa ka touche ek bankla ni la han vle bay pot bay moun men moun pa ka pwen ou gade nécessaire pour ou gouvernement cette ici a prêté 30 des millions dollars parce que ou ay pli bon marché pito ou ale l'autre côté a prêté la han very interesting interest rates in fact what i find really interesting mad madam deputy president is that based on what the, mem the leader of government business highlighted in terms of how prudent he is in seeking for the best rate of interest to loan monies, I suspect the government should use that principle throughout its procurement and always look for the best price in everything, including hiring contractors, and do not do direct purchase to, to fresh start. That principle would help. Get your best price always. And don't be selective just in looking for where you could loan monies. But put that aside. The point was made that our local banks are liquid. But then the government said necessary to go to NIC. Well, NIC, is NIC should have money. NIC is not liquid. I, listen, I'm a contributor to NIC. And I would like to know NIC that the money is there. And I'm approaching the time when I'll go and knock on the door and tell them, pass it. <laughs> You understand? And if the NIC is investing, I suspect the NIC board of directors would look at the maturing age of persons when they will retire. They'll also look at how they leverage, what amount of money they put on the stock exchange, what amount of money that they're going to put in government buildings, what amount of money they're going to put there and there. They're not just going to 
invest madly. But of course, government is always the one who would request from the NIC. But if the government is aware that there's such liquidity in the commercial banks, couldn't the development bank have an alternative arrangement? That's the question. And why the first, why our dear institution, the NIC? Because I'm really concerned, Madam President, from a personal standpoint about how the NIC invests. And from the government side, I think every St. Lucian, every St. Lucian who is contributing towards the NIC should be concerned. Because there will come a time when we will knock on that door the NIC. And I do not want them to change the age and move it from, I think, what? Is it 75? 65. And tell me that they will not be ready for me at 65. Therefore, they need to come here. And you pass a law and tell me that it will be my, I need to retire at age 80 or 70. You understand? So this is the general concern. But the principle, it is based on some of the, the, the borrowing. And, and Madam President, when I say reckless, reckless borrowing, I want it to be understood, and I'm not characterizing, I try not to characterize the government business in a way to, to suggest that I do not understand certain aspects of governance. Because I have listened to a number of parliaments over the years, and it is not uncommon for government to come to parliament. But I do not know why in this, this, this particular parliament, we are, we are here with pretty close to over nine motions, borrow, 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 as if it was almost deliberate that we could not exhaust discussion to, to, to open up each one to understand what is in it. Again, this is a parliament where you ask questions, and you, on this other side, have the answers. So do not take my questions in the wrong way, but to furnish the parliament with the answers. Because I think this is quite a bit happening today, and maybe you will not come to the parliament again. Maybe you will have no plans to come to this parliament to loan any more monies, because today seems to be the day when we decide to loan everything. Everything. Avec l'année l'argent pour tout le monde. And I hear housing. Madam President, I am interested in the housing sector. And um, I asked the question, development bank housing. Is it the right place for the housing activity to be? What kind of housing that the, gov that the development bank is selling what product for housing that the development bank is going to sell based on that on, on this guarantee vis-a-vis -vis what is available at the other commercial banks what is the housing need nationally and where should government provide that support i see some activities in luxury housing i suspect and there are other housing initiatives happening other places what is the best use or the best intervention at this time. And I say this with regards in, in, the, in the whole idea of climate change, Madam President, which is a very important consideration as we embark on development, and also the capacity building of our communities. Of all of the, 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 um, the borrowing that has come to this parliament, and I've, and I've looked at it, I keep looking for the areas of capacity building associated with each initiative. And I'm sure Senator Belrose would, would, would know that um, usually when we go to the Development Bank, the, the, the World Bank, or the European Union with our loans, they always incorporate a soft component to whatever that we're doing. And I think it is necessary, Madam President, as we speak of development, we look at our human resource. 
the human resource. And when I say human resource, I'm not just talking about schools. I'm talking about our communities, where these things are happening. We need to empower our communities. And we should not, at any time, just parachute into communities, build infrastructure, without engaging the communities on what is happening. And just like we did the, um, this, this good project I saw in Tiroche, the one that we spoke about earlier on, but it would be good that the community surrounding that project were part of the discussion, the discuss, the design, you know, because the issue of the ownership of these things are important. But what most times we see as St. Lucians is that the government is implementing a road and you see the contractors are working. The government is building a school or is renovating the school. And I heard about the schools in, in the presentation um, and his response. And I'm happy to know that you're fixing schools. I'm happy to know that you said that you're fixing our health facilities. And I hope St. Jude is on, on, is, is, is on, on, on board as, as one of the things that you're loaning the money to implement. You know, but together, Madam President, the whole issue of human resource capacity building, Madam Deputy President, sorry, and that will, you would have to bear with me, Madam, Pre Madam Deputy President, as I <laughs> try to <laughs> keep my mind on this important term. Madam President, I said earlier on, our contractors are our, our mm -hmm. part of our human resource, you know. It's part of our human resource, our contractors, because they're service providers. When we embark on infrastructure development, we should not just think as to the end product of the road, but what do we leave behind in terms of those who participate? Those who did not win the tender is also part of the experience. But they should be, we should encourage our borrowing to lend support to every aspect of development. Madam President, I've seen that we've built large buildings, large infrastructure, and then you, you ask, what is the experience? When we did the um, Boseju Cricket Grounds, Crafton, who worked with the Trinidadians, learned the art of building the, the, the grounds, the pitches, to the extent that he's one of the best in the region. He is the best in the region. And he's been called all over the world to come and fix cricket pitches. This is a resource that was created or was developed as a result of doing the Boseju Cricket Grounds, human resource. And I think we must not just take these things for granted, but we must be deliberate when we take loans that we think of the human resource or the capacity building Madam President, we are losing significance of our institutions when I think of our planning division. I'm hardly hearing them in the discussion these days in terms of what is being approved, you know, planning, the planning authority, you know. We also have the area, the, the, the a department who was keen in the discussion in terms of the environment, providing guidance in terms of our environment, environmental impact assessment. They, to me, have, they, they cease to exist. I don't know if it's because Mr. Mr. Dove, who used to be in head, no longer, but some of those persons who used to speak in the media on matters of our environment, these institutions have died. We are regressing as a country because I find that, Madam President, what really was taking us to the fore, what, what other islands used to call upon us to assist them with, while I was at the ministry, when I, when I worked with government, they wanted to know how to go about doing certain things because they recognized we had certain expertise locally we were being developed. So with all of this loaning of monies, we need to look at our communities and their resource. We need to ensure that when we leave, when we are through with these interventions, that we have some sort of capacity, we have contributed to the capacity of this island. Too much of those hard things will not cut it. As a matter of fact, you talk about bridges, but based on what I see happening in this country, Madam President, I think we will have to build bridges in, in, in reestablishing family relationships based on some of the interventions that are taking place. We have to build back friendships because we have destroyed a lot, Madam President. Madam President, a, 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 young, man was, a young man got a subcontract 
to participate on a job. And because he was supposed to be supporting the Labour Party, he was, he was asked to be dismissed. However, the person who employed him saw him having the expertise to do that particular work. We cannot develop a country by building bridges but breaking down relationships. Because at the end of the day, we have one St. Lucia. We have one St. Lucia. And I think that these interventions should give consideration to investing in our people at all times. I still believe, Madam President, we should look at the idea of how we go about doing all of those borrowing at this point. At one time, crowding the parliament with all of those borrowing is, is as if we didn't want, you didn't want to have thorough discussion on each one of them. But I'll try my best to contribute to them as much as possible. But it is crowded.